Our book, Influences, is going to be released in on Amazon on the 8th of February, which is a Wednesday. Click on the link on the page for a registration to be informed of the launch date again Wednesday the 8th of February yeah and we're going to have a launch party as well actually so there'll be a link for that as well so if you want to come from far and wide don't don't too many people can because uh, we won't have enough food for everyone should I read a chapter? I think you should I might read one after you as well The Price is Right Part 1 now Bruce Forsyth was a British national treasure. So much so that they renamed the classic US TV show The Price is Right to Bruce's Price is Right when it was syndicated in the UK. As if it was bringing his name and the brand of the show somehow brought more credibility, class, distinction and humour, which of course it did. We want you to close your eyes and picture that you were there on the very game show. Yes, even with the late great Forsyth still at the host. Your name has been called at the audience and you've made a spectacle of yourself dancing and waving your hands on the way down the steps. You've then been presented with a ridiculously oversized name badge with your name scribbled on it before setting behind a podium that looks like a cheap version of something you would have had a Christmas cracker at a works do. Bruce introduces you to the audience and then after a few quips to the audience and a few glances at the viewers at home, sister systematically demolishing the fourth wall in the process, a few stagehands wheel out the game show. You have three doors in front of you. Behind one of them is a life-changing amount of money. Behind the other two is absolutely nothing. Luckily for you, in this scenario, you've recently finished a PhD in the Advanced Applied Statistics. When Bruce asks you about the one in three chance that you have to win that life-changing amount of money, you know full well that those are incredibly favourable odds for the show's producers and extremely unfavourable for you. You have a 33.3% chance of winning the money. They have a 66.6% chance of keeping it. However, luck then plays a very unexpected part in the live TV broadcast. One of the doors suffers a malfunction and accidentally opens on its own, revealing there's nothing whatsoever behind it. A bedlam ensues and covered under the very professional cloak of business as usual Forsyth at the helm of the live show, Bruce presses the earpiece consulting with his producer. The floor manager panics, wondering whether to cut to the commercials. Everyone looks to the presenter for the inspiration and acting like nothing untoward happened at all, he smooths through the whole process by stating calmly, well, there we go. You now have one of two doors to choose from. You now have 50% odds. Everyone relaxes. Yes, that might not have been the part of the script, but Granada Television, or was it Thames TV? And their backers breathe a sigh of relief that they still might get away with this one and not losing all the money. But this is where your PhD plays a part. You know it isn't 50-50. Just because there are only two doors left, there's still three doors. There were still three doors there as part of the game. Just one of them was now open. You had a 33% chance of winning the money at the start. Now that one of the doors fell open, someone handed you an extra 33% chance. It isn't 50-50. You now have 66.6% chance of winning the money and the studio has a 33.3% chance of holding on to it. The name of the game here is never panic when the odds seem against you. Things can happen to swing the momentum of things right before your very eyes.